people have spoken. That's right, South Florida. You asked for Deco Drive at 7.30, and now you've got it. This is no election year ploy. It's just good old American democracy at work. Deco Drive at 7.30, weeknights on WSBN 7. Register with us. For continuing Team 7 coverage of this weekend's prayer and protest, keep it on 7 News. Tonight, live from the 7 Newsplex beginning first at 5, their mission to honor fallen heroes who were shot down at sea, their memorial marred by rough weather, giant waves, and pounding rain. But Cuban exiles did not give up. Brothers to the rescue planes kept on course, taking to the skies to pay their respects. Family members prepare to immortalize the victims, and thousands prepare to hear the message. 7 News was with the Cuban exiles by land, air, and sea when they honored four members of Brothers to the Rescue. Tonight, complete coverage from the 7 News team on a day of prayer and protest. 7 News First at Five begins right now. This is a special edition of 7 News. South Florida observes a day of prayer and protest. Good evening and welcome to our special coverage of a day of prayer and protest in South Florida. A day that didn't go as planned. I'm Jessica Aguirre. I'm Craig Stevens. Those remembering the four men shot down by Cuban MiGs had to cope with rain, pounding waves and bouts of seasickness. In fact, a flotilla at sea was forced to turn back. We have the entire Newsplex devoted to this story tonight. Let's get things started right now with 7 News reporter Patrick Frazier. He's joining us live from Key West. Patrick? Well, Craig, their hearts said go, their heads said no, but they went anyway. And the flotilla has just begun to return. Take a look down there. This is the rum bum, the first ship out. It went out this morning. They wanted to go 70 miles. They only went 40, but they are still very proud of what they did because despite the horrible conditions, they honored those four dead pilots. They had security. The Coast Guard surrounded them. But what they didn't have was luck. The weather smothered them. The seas were horrifying. Seven to ten foot waves slapped even the biggest boats around. Twenty-two set out this morning. Understandably, several turned back by noon. Soon, the other 13, all 30 feet or longer, had to face reality. The weather is just very bad, which was what happens in winter in the Gulf Stream whenever you have fronts coming in. And uh, the weather is just beating the boats and beating the people up. Yet for nearly 40 miles, they crawled forward, dropping white carnations to honor the dead and send a message to the world. We are not terrorists. We're just asking the world to understand that we are fighting for our country. Soon, though, the fight went out of their hearts as their heads said, it's too dangerous. The 13 craft circled. Only the growl of the engines broke their moment of silence. Then the tribute to the pilots who lost their lives. The Reese didn't mark the exact spot where they were killed, but the words were on target. Please give us strength to overcome all difficulties. Please prevent bloodshed in our homeland and allow us to dream and be free as other people of the world so that we don't have to come here to mourn any other young men in the state of Florida. Then the wreaths to honor the men who now lay in what's being called the largest grave in the world. There you are. You're looking at a live picture down there right now of the men as they are coming in right now. They're applauding. They all walk pretty well, but considering what they went through, that is amazing. Brian Andrews was one of those people on board a boat. Let's let him describe what it's like. As you can see from the inside of the boat, the cabin is an absolute mess. That's because during this entire journey, we have been jostled around by anywhere from six to 10 foot waves. The boat's basically booming up and down. As you can tell from my photographer, Fabian Carrillo, he's having trouble keeping his balance. Everybody is. We've basically been on our hands and knees crawling through the cabinet points and holding on to anything and everything just to, to stand stable. Now, the situation at this hour, we've been out on the ocean for about six hours. The seas are so rough that they are considering turning around. But at this point, we're waiting for Brothers to the Rescue to do a flyover of our location. 
at which time the decision will be made as to whether or not to do the service at whatever lo or location we're at or to continue at speeds of eight knots another five hours, we are told, to where the original service was intended to go. But again, the waves have been extremely rough. We have been, uh, you can tell just by looking at me, we have been drenched by the waves and the salt and everything. We are expecting also a storm front to come in tonight. And that's a concern for us to get back. They want to make sure that, it, yeah, we get out there, we do the service, we pay the tribute to these four men who lost their lives last weekend. But we get back safely. All the boats involved in the flotilla already were told that uh, two boats have turned around and some of the smaller craft are considering turning around. If you see way in the back there, that's where the flotilla is. We've been making great speed. We're uh, among the first three boats in the flotilla right now, but because of the rough seas, everyone's been having trouble keeping up with the, with the, with the lead boats, and so they are way back there. Now, the Coast Guard cutter, let me get Fabian Carilla to pan around. That's a, one of the Coast Guard cutters that is escorting the flotilla to our place about uh, 21 miles off the coast of Cuba, where we intend to do the, uh, the wreath laying service, or the Cuban activists, rather, intend to do the wreath laying service and the cross laying service. The Coast Guard cutter has been in touch with us and said, hey, you guys need to make a decision. The weather's going to get bad. Are you going to stay or are you going to go? And at this point, we don't know what that decision is going to be. Reporting from the waters off Cuba, in between Cuba and Key West, Brian Andrews, 7 News. All right, and there you see, back live in Key West, another boat coming in. Gary, if you can pan over to your left, you will be able to see two more boats that went out in, those flot in the flotilla. Two of the smaller boats, actually. And imagine if it was tough for Brian Andrews. Imagine what it was like on one of those boats for Fabian Carrillo, the, the man who took those pictures with Brian today and did a, had, had an almost impossible job, and yet you saw the pictures in those stories and what Brian did. An incredible job. The people coming in right now are very proud. Why? They weren't able to go exactly where they wanted to go, but they did exactly what they wanted to do. This morning, Craig Cropper was with those people as they began to leave about 5 o'clock. Craig joins me now live from down on the dock where some of the other boats are coming in. Craig? Patrick, what happened today comes as such a disappointment to so many people because the day began with high hopes. People were organized. They were energized. They were raring to go. The day began with promise. Yeah! Applause for the lead flotilla boat as it heads for the open seas. At the crack of dawn, the rum bum and more than 20 other boats are on their way. On board, hundreds of Cuban exiles determined to mourn the four men who lost their lives last weekend. We go because we believe in what happened to this uh, for Cuba. And you know, one of them is De La Peña, is my wife's cousin, and he died in the down the plane, you know, so we decided to go and see we can help. What we're going to do is just a symbolic farewell to our brother who died in the name of freedom. Hundreds came to participate in today's memorial service at sea. They lined up to sign up, but not everyone made it on a boat. More than a hundred were turned away. Not enough room for all. Even the people who came all the way from New Jersey were left out. We got here about 10 o'clock and we made the trip here. We wanted to be um, part of this. And unfortunately, we weren't able to uh, attend, but we just want to wish them a safe trip. Well, we came from New Jersey. We, we arrived yesterday and um, we've been here since about 10 o'clock at night, waiting until now, and we haven't been able to get on the boat. It's got to be a disappointment. It is, but we understand. A disappointing day for those left behind, a difficult day for those on the water. Bad weather and rough seas force flotilla boats slowly but surely to turn around. The ones measuring less than 35 feet began returning to the marina after being gone less than two hours. It's an experience like uh, riding a roller coaster. This man says he turned his boat around once one of his passengers became too seasick to continue. One of my guys got sick. He started vomiting, a headache. And I was afraid that they might go either me or them. We would go into an hypothermia situation. And uh, I requested permission from the flotilla leader to uh, return to base. The roller coaster ride is over for all those involved with today's flotilla. It's over for today, but you know what? People out here are already talking about doing this again. In Key West, I'm Craig Gropper for Brian Andrews and for Patrick Frazier and for 7 News.
All right, thank you very much, Craig. Well, it was no easier in the air. Now, despite pledges to pray over the very same spot where their fellow pilots had been shot down, some brothers to the rescue planes could not navigate through this weather. Several pilots had to turn back. Seventh Rochelle Bridges joins us live from Brothers to the Rescue headquarters in Opalaka. Rochelle, is there an air of disappointment there? Jessica, I can report that there is an air of determination here. It was not the brothers to the rescue pilots who turned back, but some of the supporters for today's flyover. Three of the 23 planes did come back early, saying that at some point during their flight, they could only use their instruments. Visibility was down to zero, that they were flying just a little bit above the sea. But we can tell you tonight that 20 of the 23 planes that took off from Opalaka this morning did make it about 21 miles off the shores of Cuba. It began with a prayer for safe passage and the hope that by commemorating the shoot down of four brothers to the rescue pilots last Saturday, the fight against Castro's Cuba has reached a turning point. The only way that I will ever be able to sleep comfortable at night if this is the turning point, that their lives were not lost in vain. For in this manner, their example shall not die. We have suffered some difficult days. It seemed the skies opened up and the heavens wept for the four pilots as 23 planes taxied on a rain slick runway. This turn of inclement weather did not stop the brothers' mission to memorialize and to send a message. The fight against, against Castro is not over. Uh, it's going to be a hard one, but Brothers to the Rescue is uh, demoted and our conviction is bigger and stronger than any mix or any weapons that Fidel Castro might have. The enemy and the ideal of a free Cuba is what unites this exile community. Dozens watched and cheered as the planes taxied out. So in my blood, I feel all this, and I pray that everything goes right, and I pray for a freedom of Cuba in the future. Rafters to the rescue league, those three planes that came back to Opalaka after inclement weather deterred them. But we can tell you that 20 of the 23 planes did make it out uh, to the area offshore Cuba, and they did memorialize those four pilots who were lost last Saturday. At Opalaka, I'm Rochelle Bridges, 7 News. All right, Rochelle, thank you. Tonight, this day of prayer and protest moves to the Orange Bowl, where thousands of people are expected within the next hour for a memorial service there. 7 News reporter Belkis Nerea is standing by live at the Orange Bowl with more on that. Belkis? Craig, that is definitely, definitely the case. People are by here by the thousands. Among them, perhaps the most prominent Cuban-American here in Miami, Miami's own Gloria. Stefan, Gloria, what made you come out today? I wouldn't miss this. I mean, my community has been behind me on a personal note so many times for me, for my family, their prayers. And uh, this is really a show of, of force and of warmth for those families of the victims that, that lost their lives doing humanitarian effort. And I really couldn't miss this. You know, I'm really here to support my Cuban-American community. So the decision bes beside the rain, everything, it was an easy one for you to make, obviously. Very easy. I'm glad I was in town. It would have been sad for me to be out of town when this happened. And uh, the rain is nothing. We can get a little wet. I mean. Uh, We've lost, obviously, a lot more than, uh, you know, uh, what we could lose by getting wet here. I mean, just had to be here for my, for my community. Thanks a lot, Gloria. Thanks Thank so you. much for joining us. Thank Gloria Stefan, as always, supporting the Cuban exile cause here in Miami. And just let me tell you, in the past hour or so, this place just keeps getting more and more packed. Uh, thousands of people here already. You can see some of the upper seating up there now starting to get full as well. And as Gloria said, a lot of the people here say that despite the rain, despite the bad weather, nothing was going to keep them away from this event today. Uh, they expected probably about 40 to 50,000 people to attend today's event. It's a memorial service for those four victims that lost their lives exactly one week ago today. Uh, things were looking a little ugly this morning with the rain. A lot of people were wondering if maybe uh, the event was going to be as successful as they had hoped. However, in the last hour or so, as I mentioned, this just keeps filling up. More and more people keep arriving. The energy level here is incredible. There's a lot of chanting going on, a lot of emotion among the people. And really, the people here are hoping that despite the tragedy that they've suffered, they're hoping that perhaps there's going to be a light at the end of the tunnel. It's very heartwarming. I feel compelled. I feel sorry for them about their loss. But I think this is the beginning for something better to come out. I am very hurt about what happened. I feel a very deep sense of pain. The, the Cuban side of me and the American side of me, I'm very angry at the administration that we did not take appropriate actions. 
And what you're looking at right now is a live Skycam picture over Miami's Orange Bowl there. People continue to flock to the stadium. It's got a capacity for about 78,000 people and obviously the organizers of this event, Miami's Cuban exile community, hoping that they'll pack the stadium to the rafters and get their message across to the international community. A story, of course, we're going to be on top of all night long for now live at the Orange Bowl. I'm Belkis Nere, 7 News. All right, thank you very much, Belkis. Well, today's prayer and protest caps off seven days of intense international tension that began one week ago today after the shoot-down of those brothers to the rescue planes. 7's Pam Gigante takes us back to the flight that took four lives on a flight that altered U.S.-Cuba relations. A missile hit the airplane and just blew it to pieces. I mean, hardly any wreckage, uh, no, no, no debris, just a puff of smoke and then a boom. We just appeared from nowhere and came and they sent the, uh, you know, rocket out and smoke, flame all over. Passengers on a cruise ship describing what they saw while spending a leisurely afternoon on board the Majesty by the Sea, Dozens of people watched as Cuban MiG fighter jets shot down two small planes belonging to Brothers to the Rescue. I was on the quiet deck. I was resting along the side. I heard the aircraft go over and shortly after I heard boom, boom. I heard two blasts. Like a jet fighter, fixed wing fighter just came out of nowhere, you know, going fast, low over the water. How close was it to the boat? Like uh, two miles, three miles. A fishing boat in the Florida Straits was even closer to the scene. The boat's captain saw the whole thing go down. He comes in, he gets right behind him. You know, I watched the missile. The missile came off the right wing, come off the pile and ignited. And it took four seconds, I counted, 1,001, 1,002, 1,003, 1,004. I remember thinking, I said, that's an awful slow damn missile for as close as he is. Boom, he hit that thing and tumbled about three times and fireballed and it hit the water. Riley is convinced the shoot down happened in international water. First plane went down about 25 miles from Cuba. The second plane went down about 28 miles from Cuba. Well, 28, somewhere in there. Two, the other plane went down two to three miles in front of us. The wreckage that fell to the ground was 25 miles from Cuba. That I'll swear to, because I was there. What isn't there is any sign of debris or of the four pilots. This Coast Guard video shows the only sign of wreckage an oil slick believed to have come from one of the two planes. They have suspended the search for the pilots. Pam Giganti, 7 News. And of course, we will continue to cover every angle of the story over the next two hours and throughout the evening. You can look for complete coverage of this day of prayer and protest. We're taking you live inside Cuba for a report on what the Cuban people are saying today and what they're hearing. We're going to do that coming up tonight at 6. Fidel Castro is finally talking about last Saturday's shoot down, and you'll hear what he has to say in just a few minutes. Also, the wife of the man accused of spying for Cuba is also remembering the victims today, and she's talking to 7 News. Right now, live pictures from Skycam 7 over the Orange Bowl. A memorial service, as you heard there, is getting underway shortly. Thousands of people are already there. Tens of thousands are expected before the day is over. And, of course, we will be there. Stay with us. We're coming right back. A special edition of 7 News. South Florida observes a day of prayer and protest. 7 News, brought to you in part by your South Florida Ford dealers and by Carl's Furniture, for everything you love about home. It's still going strong, but not for long. Ford's Great Percent Event. Get 4.8% financing for up to 48 months on your choice of 12 top-selling 1996 Ford cars and trucks. Try the world-class Ford Contour for only $2.19 a month with all these popular features. Get 4.8% financing or $600 cash back. Or choose to lease for only $2.19 a month for 24 months. Great deals on a dozen great Fords at your South Florida Ford dealer right now. Enter the world of Carl this weekend and experience the incredible two-day sale. Pay nothing, no interest, nothing till 1997. Thomasville, Bernhardt, Century and more. The fashions you dream of at a fraction of the cost. This Saturday and Sunday only, Carl's incredible two-day sale. It's an experience you won't want to miss. Maybe it was fate or our sweet children. No way! 
or that truck that almost hit me came this close. But for some reason, I pulled off, and there was a KFC. And they have this whole new menu. Oh, for you. I was surprised. New Colonel's Crispy Strips and Chunky Chicken Pot Pie, made fresh all day. You got all this at KFC? If you haven't been to KFC lately, you don't know what you're missing. I may never have to cook again. Now get a Colonel's Crispy Strips or Chunky Chicken Pot Pie combo meal, just $3.99. In the last few weeks, only seven news uncovered these stories. A South Florida cop caught bragging about a beating. Who are the people the Metro officer claimed she beat up? A simple surgery that left some scarred for life. The victims want to make sure this doesn't happen to anyone else. And an inside look at how custom inspectors intercept killer cargo. Well, it's not luck, it's skill. Revealing reports you didn't see anywhere else. Seven News, we bring you more than just the day's headlines. Closed caption brought to you in part by City Furniture, the ultimate furniture store. Continuing coverage of this day of prayer and protest, you are looking at live pictures from the Miami Orange Bowl where thousands of people are gathered tonight to remember the four men who died at sea after being shot down by Cuban MiGs. This is a story we are going to follow in depth for the next two hours. The four men are also being remembered at sea with a flotilla and a flyover by Brothers to the Rescue. And as that flotilla made its way toward the site of the doomed planes, the Cuban military made its presence known. Cuban gunboats could be seen patrolling the nation's territorial waters today. The Cuban Coast Guard made the show of force just to make sure members of the flotilla did not venture into Cuban waters. And there are strong words and no apologies coming from Cuban dictator Fidel Castro. Now Castro says he takes full responsibility for the order to shoot down the brothers to the rescue planes. But as Julia Yarborough tells us, the Cuban leader also says that the loss of four lives rests squarely on the shoulders of U.S. officials. If there is any penetration of Cuban airspace, I think they will act as they did on Saturday. Clearly, the hope is that there will not be. That prediction from Time Magazine reporter Joel Adinger. Just returning from Havana, Adinger spoke with Castro Wednesday. During the interview, Adinger says Castro claimed full responsibility for the shooting down of the brothers to the rescue planes. The communist leader justifying those acts, saying brothers to the rescue had been warned. The Cuban government certainly makes the argument that there's been a pattern of uh, harassment really since July of 1994. Uh, some 15 violations of Cuban airspace, they claim, uh, and uh, frustration over the inability of the United States government to halt the brothers' flights. Castro is quoted as saying, they harassed our air force, violated our airspace, dropped leaflets on our capital, and engaged in other constant acts of provocation. Castro telling the Time reporter his government has on record at least nine incidents of such violations. The Cuban leader reportedly goes on to say he instructed the Cuban Air Force and Armed Forces to make sure this does not happen again. Says Castro, we reported each and every violation to the United States in a diplomatic protest. We warned U.S. officials time and time again. We had been patient, but there are limits. From the perspective of Cuban exiles, the move amounts to nothing less than murder. But according to Adinger, much of the action, or perceived inaction by the U.S. government, is baffling to the Cuban leader. From the Cuban government's perspective, the notion that the government cannot control uh, airplanes is really quite foreign. Mm -hmm. uh, it is, the, um, it is the, the distinction, or the difference rather, of a totalitarian regime and a democracy. So for the Cuban, uh, for the Cuban government, it, it is very difficult to understand why the United States could not physically restrain the brothers' flights. The very first day, the U.S. authorities had enforced their regulations, enforced international law, and stopped an international provocation. In contrast, quick action by the Cuban MiGs. Castro says, quote, we gave the order to the head of the Air Force on Saturday. The brothers' planes came twice. On the third pass, they scrambled and did their job. They shot the planes down. They are professional. They did what they believe is the right thing. The complete interview with Fidel Castro will be in next week's issue of Time magazine. Julia Yarbo, 7 News. 
All right, thank you. Coming up next, more nonstop coverage on this day of prayer and protest. We are awaiting the flotilla boats as they return to Key West, more of them. And when they do, we will take you back there. Also, the wife of an accused spy is sharing in this heartbreak. Today, she is remembering those victims who worked alongside her husband. We're going to have Anna's story. Also, more live pictures from Skycam 7 at the Orange Bowl. Thousands of people who do not want to forget the victims of last Saturday's shooting are gathering there right now. We'll have more on that when this special edition of 7 News continues. Stay with us. You're watching a special edition of 7 News. South Florida observes a day of prayer and protest. It's the perfect time to bring your home to life because Miami has its fifth home life furniture store. It's the furniture store where you can feel at home, where you'll find all the best styles and prices that are as comfortable as the surroundings. Especially now during our grand opening all on sale where everything's on sale. The Home Life Furniture Store from Sears. It's everything you need to bring your home to life. Join the celebration at our four Miami area stores as well as our newest store in Miami International. Hit $250 billion in sales like McDonald's, they put you in the Business Hall of Fame. Hit $1 trillion in real estate transactions like the Century 21 system, you're in a class by yourself. You're the number one real estate company. And when you're this big, you can do things others can't, like average a home bought or sold by our customers every minute, every day. The Century 21 system can sell your home fast, maybe this minute, so don't waste a second. Call number one, Century 21. Good morning. Yeah, how was that night shift? I'll give you a call tomorrow. Yeah, it's Jay. What do you mean you're sleeping? Mom, it's Jay. The Bell South phone your way to the Olympic Games sweepstakes. So what are you, like a half hour drive from here? The more local toll calls you make with Bell South, the greater your chances of winning. Hey, Randy, wake up! Chadwick High. <laughs> you didn't go to Chadwick High? So keep on calling. Can I, can I call you tonight or? All right, two weeks it is. I'm calling you in two weeks. Enter the world of Carl this weekend and experience the incredible two-day sale. Pay nothing, no interest, nothing till 1997. Thomasville, Bernhardt, Century and more. The fashions you dream of at a fraction of the cost. This Saturday and Sunday only, Carl's incredible two-day sale. It's an experience you won't want to miss. You are about to see a revolutionary breakthrough in design. Years of research, hundreds of engineers, and an entirely new production system went into designing the ultimate precision machine. Introducing the incredible new GE Profile Washer. It has a 31% larger tub opening and can wash 33% bigger loads. In fact, it has larger capacity than any model in its class. The new GE Profile. Take one out for a spin. Four pilots shot down by Cuban MiGs. Now South Florida observes a day of prayer and protest. And 7 News will bring it all to you. Live team coverage from all over South Florida to Key West. Extended newscasts, up to the minute reports. For the most complete coverage of this breaking story, keep watching 7 News. 7 News brought to you in part by Carl's Furniture. The place for furniture and design. More live pictures from Skycam 7 over the Orange Bowl in Miami as thousands of people turn out to pay respects for the four men shot and presumed lost at sea. And of course, we have reporters covering every angle of the story and the story out at sea. We have much more ahead on a special edition of 7 News at 5.30. It's next. Seven News, brought to you in part by Bears, for the best quality furniture and interior design. And by University of Miami Jackson Memorial Medical Center. There is a difference. It's Bears for elegance and design in decorating your home. And this weekend, Bears offers 50% off all Stanley and Lineage furniture in stock. Bears features only the finest quality home furnishings. Trexel Heritage, Henradon, Lane, and others. And now, save 20 to 50% on every item. No one undersells Bears. At Bears, there's always complimentary interior design service and immediate free delivery for a 
outstanding quality, exceptional style, and real value. Where? Fairs. While we take great pride in our awards, results, an outstanding reputation. We care just as much about kindness and understanding. For continuing Team 7 coverage of this weekend's prayer and protest, keep it on 7 News.